Generic greetings and welcome to Production Line. This is described by many as the Henry Ford Simulator, a game where you will assemble a production line in order to build different cars and manufacture different styles and shapes with different body panels and have different properties and technologies and all of that sort of thing. It's a game I've played several times on the channel, although not in recent months. This is Alpha 1.37, so it's still in development but is updated very frequently. It's a mix between a building and tycoon game, I guess, but because I haven't played it in a while, I thought it was about time I jumped back in and did a series on it. So let's go to new game and we'll do the medium factory. I've played most of the factory sizes in various forms, whether it be full series or standalone videos, but the medium is in nice, is a nice decent one to uh, start back on because um, my my skill set will be slightly blunted. I mean, it's it's fairly dull to begin with anyway, but uh, I haven't played this in a while, so yeah, it's going to take me a little while to get back up to speed. So this is a nice size to begin with, and then if we do max this factory out, even after expanding into the different areas, we'll uh, we'll go to a bigger factory. So anyway, if you're not aware of how this game plays, I'll go through the very basics of it. Essentially, you have to make a car from scratch, and the way you do that is by bringing in resources from these areas here. If we just unpause it, you can see you get some nice little green arrows showing what's going to be imported and then you've also got the export area which is where you actually put out your car and then you'll sell it and what you will do is bring in raw resources and then assemble the car on various production line um, areas I guess uh, different assembly areas so you've got chassis body paint it engine accessories, electronics, quality check, and then export. That's the basics that you have to have. There's lots of options to um, break this down. The reason you will do that will be made clear later on. Because when you research different pieces of technology, like say, I don't know, um, automatic windows, you need you can't just assemble a chassis, you have to actually, or the body rather, you have to uh, fit like the doors separately and such. So. That's why it's all broken down, but for the time being, what we're going to do is make the very basic car, the most basic car we can manage, which will be a sedan. In fact, we do already have one here. This is the sedan, and as you can see, it's got um, a very, very weird colour. Uh, apparently, we can change the colour of it. Close that. Uh, yeah, we can change the colour of it. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, the car we have, and um, it's got basic car, that's all it is, and then it's got a quality, that's all it has, that's the only thing it has in. Any other technology that you can research will be listed in here once we've got it, and then you can then you can say, right, build a different model, and then you do it that way. But anyway, for now, let's just build a car. So, we need a chassis, so we will start by placing it, Ooh, where do we want to place it? Well... You have to think a little bit ahead here because if you place it too close to these edges and you block it off, then you can't, then, you know, when you unlock it, you won't be able to go around. So we have to think about that one. I think it would be best if we put it um, probably around here, probably around here because we're not going to be using this corner and there's enough room for expansion there. So we're going to put it in, say, there and then we'll build along. So that says no route to stockpile and that's true because this is the stockpile here. This is where we bring stuff in and then it'll go around. You also have... Um, well, you have supply stockpiles and you have resource importers, and basically the supply stockpile is like a uh, interim storage solution, which I don't really use and I've really used back in the day because it was a bit glitchy, but uh, we'll be trying it later on. But anyway, so we'll build the chassis. When you click on this, it shows you all of the different properties and what it'll do. So the chassis assembly has a current task of fit rear axle, and it'll probably do like the rear axle and the forward axle and the chassis and then the drive shaft and things like that. And it shows you the total time to do this, which is 12 minutes, uh, 52 seconds. So that's what it's got, but that's only its ideal. So that's only its ideal case. That's what it'll do under the most um, perfect of circumstances. So if it doesn't have resources, obviously it'll be waiting and things like that. So that's our basic ones. So that's our chassis. So we'll say the next one will be fit body. I always say leave a gap of at least one between the two areas, just in case you need to spur the different lines off. Then we'll paint it. Then we'll fit the engine. Then we'll do accessories. Then electronics. And then quality check, and then there we go. So we need to get this car out of the door, and I think we'll put it out there. So what we'll do, we'll have an export, and we'll say export in... Actually, do you want to do it there, or do you want to export there? I think actually over here. There we go. So and that is all of the lines put in. They are, they are colour-coded to uh, represent what part it's on, so you can quickly go, right, well, I know this is like the, the final stages, I know this is the sort of painting bit, but you get the idea. Anyway, so we'll go for a conveyor, and then you will connect all the ra connect rate these up, so do that. These do have a polarity. You can see there is arrows on there. There's some arrows, so if you get that wrong, then the cars won't be able to go from one stage to the other. So there's all that connected up. So, will this assemble cars? No. No, it will not. Uh, even though it does look very nice and you've got different robots. In fact, I've, I think the robots have changed somewhat. They were the original robots, these ones here. These yellow ones, but now we've got red ones here. 
with different heads. Those will be welding robots, whereas these will probably be the ones that just lift stuff in and then, like, bolt stuff. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Anyway, uh, let's go for some resource importers. Uh, we'll have one, and then... Do we want two? Well, we've got one we're not using over here, so we'll have two. Obviously, the distance between the importers and your destination doesn't matter. And we'll click on resource conveyor, and that um, gives us a nice little overlay to show you where the stuff needs to go. So it needs to go to these red bits here. Now, most of the most of the areas you can build over the top of like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this one will have go along there and then into that one and then that one and then that one and this one will go back and then in so all of that is now connected so what will happen is it will start building a car what car well it is here see it says there body style sedan can't change the schedule because we have not got any other car in there we've only got one car which if we look is the basic sedan and we're going to say it's going to be the sedan b b stand for the like the basic model that's what it's going to be okay and you also got a sale premium so you can say well look it's going to cost 16,159 generic units of currency i'm going to say make it 17,775 generic units of currency and it's just going to it's going to do that because i've told it to do that um that's a bit of a sprite bug there or whatever. Look at that. See that? That's not... Pro that's problematic. Well, it's not. I mean, it's just... It just is what it is. I don't really care too much. It still works. Anyway, so this is now assembling. As you can see, the robots are going along and there's lots of sparks going off there. And it's showing you that it's using some stuff. And in the stockpile, you've got the different uh, areas. They've got, got the different components. So we've got, by the look of it, we've got the um, the axles, drive shaft, a fuel tank, and the chassis. So it's currently... Uh, it's currently fitting the fuel tank and then once it's done, which is now, it will then go forward to the next area which will be fit the body. So the robot's going to start welding and it's currently fitting the body shell. The problem, you probably already spotted it, is that this thing takes 12 seconds to make a chassis and this thing takes 31 seconds to fit the body. Well, that's not good load balancing, which is why we have to alter that. We have to alter it so it's going to be a bit more efficient and we will do that later because what i want to do now is go over to our slots once more down to facilities and a research office this is something that will allow us to research different pieces of technology which is always good now originally you could put them anywhere but now you have to place them in these like green areas so well you do i don't know why just it is the case so i'm gonna go one two three four five it does cost a lot to get that but we do need some decent research uh, i'm not going to do any marketing just yet so we're going to go to research and there's all different things we can do so there's research processes so we've got things like uh, body specialization door specialization different species it's all the specializations for building things and whatnot um, you've also got uh, advanced production so building manufacturing uh, building sensors and servos on site uh, and you also got administration and that sort of thing what i'm going to do is go for more robots first. That's generally a good way to go, I believe, because it just speeds things up. In terms of technology, this is all stuff you can add to your car. Now, there is a t there is a sort of pseudo timeline thing going on where um, different companies will research technology. Now, in in the past, it has been a bit dodgy because things like um, uh, like like lane collision warning systems will be put into cars before like a stereo. And things like that it just didn't make any sense and i don't know if that's changed or not but um, i hope it does in the future if it hasn't anywhere but um either way you've got things like emergency brake assist and reversing camera and stuff like that and bull bars you get the idea there's lots of different stuff that you can uh, build and actually is put onto the car but in order to put on things like in car music it just says unlock slot fit electronics so you will just put it on the electronics area however things like xenon headlights require um the require where is it ah accessory specialization oh so we've already got that anyway bad example okay um panoramic uh, sunroof there you go so you need to have it on the fit roof slot well we don't have a fit roof slot yet as you can see it's under fit body there it is there but if you needed to put that if you need to put that in there, if you need to put that sunroof in, you'll have to break this down even further, which is why a single production line like that just ain't cutting it. 
So, in the past I've done most of the things that the game had offered. We've done uh, very cheap cars, very expensive cars, cars with everything in them. We did the every car, which had every piece of technology in the game. We had one that, well, we did the two second car where we're putting out a car. Uh, it was only a basic car, I think, um, out the door every two seconds. And, you know, we've done all sorts of different things and we'll see what we can do later on. I'm interested in trying the hybrid vehicles. And I've just realised there's some no animation on the fans. Good, good. Um... I do like that. In fact, it looks like the dryers are the dryers are the dryers still in the game? Yes, dry undercoat and dry finish. Oh, there's different ones and then polished paint work as well. That's cool. Right. So I'm gonna speed up to max speed. And we're gonna see if we can get a car out the door. The problem, as we pointed out, however, is that it takes a while to do all of this stuff. So what am I gonna do? Well, I think we're going to have another line here. Or rather, we'll have a line this side because that's fairly free. So what we want to do is have it split across and then have another fit body, paint and engine area here. And then we'll connect it back up to this line because the accessories is only 14 seconds. Uh, the electronics is 2 seconds because there's nothing to fit. Uh, there's our um, research option. We can say upgrade all slots so uh, this is a new thing that's been added which I do appreciate so we say upgrade that and what it does is upgrade all of our areas all of the assembly areas with an additional robot which is now reduced the time a little bit so that's good no research selected what I want to do is go for um, I'm gonna do I want to go for technologies or more robots um would be nice to get maybe paint specialization no actually no more robots is the way to go I think I always feel that more robots and faster drying is the way to go just to speed things up but then we can't go we can't get behind on technology because if we do that then you know you end up making really horrible cars that nobody wants and even if they're a very basic car you know so you, you expect it there's a baseline expectance you know you expect you know a radio in every car even if it's a basic one you sort of expect that you expect in every car a heater system you don't ex you know you don't just like a coal fire in the corner although if it's a really cheap car then maybe that's one of the default options because it's made of flammable material and is really made to a budget but I wouldn't recommend you buy one of those either way we have now got a car out the door there is our showroom and you can see we've got a nice blue sedan B and that is a 17,775 generic units of currency car and the customer thought is that it's the wrong body style and not enough features so half of the customers uh, we've had six customers look at it three of, them, uh, three of them have said wrong body style three of them have said not enough features it's altering it now and eventually uh, none of them are saying it's too expensive though and then there you go it's now sold this is good, so we've made a little bit of money. Excellent. So let's alter this production line so it's um, pretty much double efficiency, or rather double speed. So body, we need to put in here. Uh, there. And then paint. And then engine. And you notice I'm putting it right next to each other. That's because we're never going to split these off. We've already split it off here. So the chassis will come along, along and along, into that, into that, into that, then finally, into there. There you go. So that's that's the same as this, just a little bit more compact because we didn't need to split it off there. Now obviously we've got a problem because this has no route to the stockpile, so we do need to alter that. So we've got a resource conveyor, and I believe we can go across like that, and oh, that can't go across, so I'll do that, and that, and then this one will just say that. There you go. Okay, so that's all of those connected up. So we'll max speed out. It says inefficient resource, uh, inefficient resources, because it hasn't uh, yet imported them, and now it has, and now it's going to crack on. So this one we'll say upgrades, and we'll say extra robots. We'll say buy all. Um, there you go, and it actually does all of them on here. Ooh, that is a good feature. I I, I approve of that. <laughs> I really approve of that because it was a bit of a nightmare going around. You know, all of your brand. Your, so you build a full production line around here, and you have to go around every single one. That was a nightmare. That was just just t totally, t completely tedious. Oh, look at that. The fan is animating. No sound by the... No. No, still no sound. That one does. You can hear it going... And like, um, you know, other such assembly noises. 
but no like fan noise on that one maybe it's on the bigger one who knows either way that's getting made that's fine and you can see the cars coming along there so you can see inside the chassis and there you go there's the seats that's a massive horn <laughs> It's like bigger than the engine bay. So we've just got um, more robots. It's going to cost us 18000 to put it on everything, which we might as well do. We're going to pause it here, and we've got no research. So we've also got robots galore, which is it provides an, <laughs> an extra robot slot. I don't think we're going to do that. I think instead we're going to go for improved efficiency, which will increase our like resource imports and things like that, which I think is quite good as well. I like the global bonuses over the technology, at least in the early game. You can see in terms of power, we've got, we're have got producing zero and we're using nearly 15,000 units of power. Uh, we can go to the efficiency statistics and we can see that um, we're actually quite efficient. Um, we've got, well, well it was, um, in terms of this it is slots running 61%. So 61% of the time things are working okay. In terms of our... In terms of our imports for, uh, where is it, expenses, uh, capital investment there, blah, 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 it is power purchase. Power purchase is about a fifth of our, of our total expenditure. No, maybe a sixth, but it'll alter, it'll, based on what we're producing, you see. Either way, that is now shipping out, that is fine. You can see, obviously, we've got a bit of a backlog here because, well, that's just how it works. Um, the chassis, these things here, these these split bits will decide where the where the bits of the car go. Sometimes it can be problematic, and in, in the past it has been, but um, it is an early access, so we forgive it somewhat. So we'll max speed this out. In terms of profit, are we making some operating profit? Uh, no, no, we are not. Um, that is bad because going bankrupt is not something we want to do, especially not in the first episode of the series. Although. Is it simply because we are... Are we... Is there a problem with the accessory fitting? No, no. I think it's coming through. Um, it's slowly starting to balance out. There's proved efficiency. We'll choose next project and we'll go for... Um, so, what have we got? Import priorities and lock capability set priorities on production slots. That's good, but a bit more, micro, a bit too micromanagey for this point in the game. Fast resource imports always decent. Boost speed at which resource importers place resources on conveyor belts. Also, this one here: predictive stock control reorders resources at the start, not the end of the production cycle. That's quite interesting. Um, that'll change the way it works completely. I'm guessing. So I'm going to say. I'm going to say I'm going to go with that one and then just work my way down because these shouldn't take too long to do. Um, in terms of profit, still, well, we're not losing a lot. Like, we're not, not losing a terrible amount. In terms of cars, how many have we sold? We've sold a total of... Um, three. No, oh, three per hour. We've got one in the showroom. So we're selling the cars, okay. In terms of the market, you can see this is our budget sedan there. And there's other ones like this one here. We're not producing the car. Um, we're not producing enough cars for this type of market. So we do need to make more. We do need to sell more cars. And we've actually got... Does it tell you the total number of car sales? Can't see it. Either way... We're selling it and we're in profit. This is good. This is good. Right, so that's a very, very, very basic production line and hopefully explained how it all functions. So we're going to leave it there. I know it's a little bit shorter than normal episodes, but, um, you know, I think it's a good time to knock it off. Next episode, what we'll do is we'll go around and we'll um, increase some efficiency when it comes to the research stuff. So we'll unlock a couple of different things and probably go ahead and start making a probably a Model B+. Plus. So a car that is still a basic car, but still has some features like a radio and maybe a heater because this doesn't have any of that. It is literally a box that goes from A to B, although it does look very, very nice. It's, um, you know, very bare bones. But, as always, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.